For the types of books that I do, it's essential that I go to all the places that I write about. It's not just to interview people there or to see the sites, but to get a sensibility for what that culture and sociology and geography is like. For this book, uh, we went to Kenya and to Hawaii, and I also went to Indonesia and Chicago, New York, L.A., uh, Kansas, all over the world. He really is a, sort of a creation, a global creation in so many ways, and his whole, uh, not only his history, but his outlook is, is shaped by that international sensibility. So uh, that's why I had to go to all the places from which his family came. I went to Hawaii twice. Uh, that's really where Barry Obama, as he was called then, uh, had most of his formative years. He was born there and lived there most of the time until he left for college. Uh, his, he lived much of that time with his grandparents in an apartment a few blocks from the Punahou School. I spent a lot of time at the Punahou School. It was a very uh, prestigious prep school that he got into as a scholarship student and uh, played basketball there. Um, his sister Maya Sotoro lives in Honolulu, so I spent a lot of time interviewing her along with many of his high school friends who remained there uh, and traveled around the island of Oahu um, to the places of his childhood, uh, to Sandy Beach where he would go swimming and body surfing, uh, a little bit beyond that to the ironing board where he he tossed his mother's ashes when she died at the early age of 53 uh, to the University of Hawaii where his parents met. The trip to Kenya was unforgettable um, and we were lucky when we were there to have a really incredible team to help us. We called them the O-Team. It was Kenneth e. Opala who was my researcher and had done a lot of groundwork for me before I got there and Gideon Okusi who was the driver for the Washington Post Bureau in Nairobi and luckily uh, uh, he was on call for us when we were there and drove us around. It was so much more than a driver. Um, and uh, Beatrice Okello was my interpreter and translator. In the small town of Oyugis and in Kandiyadiang, um, we found Obama's blood relatives living in mud huts, thatched roofs. Um, the one telltale sign usually was some photograph of President Obama and the First Lady uh, on the walls, the mud walls of their houses. So it took uh, a good 24 hours uh, to get to Indonesia. Um, and that too was a, an unforgettable experience. The sounds of the street vendors selling uh, different meats and vegetables on the streets, knocking their bamboo sticks. Um, we went to the school where, where little Barry went to first, second, and third grade, found two of his teachers, um, many of his classmates, and learned how much he immersed himself into the Indonesian culture, um, learning the language, Bahasa Indonesia. Um, so all of that really was uh, very illuminating in terms of how this little boy wasn't just plopped down somewhere um, as an expatriate kid going to an English school but really was immersed completely into the Indonesian culture. Kansas is very important to the story too because that's where the Dunham and uh, Payne families came from and uh, the president grew up with his grandparents both of whom came from Kansas. Um, in, in the small towns in south central Kansas uh, the grandfather was from El Dorado, uh, the grandmother was from Augusta, they're about 14 miles apart, um, not too far from Wichita. When we were in Kansas, we discovered uh, the documents that revealed how his great-grandmother, Ruth Armour Dunham, had committed suicide. We went to the place where it happened in a dank auto garage in uh, the capital city of Topeka. Um, we did research in Wichita where they, his great-grandparents had been married, where his grandparents ran away to get married when they were, when the grandmother, uh, uh, Madeline Payne was still in high school. Um, we went to all of the the, uh, the houses in, in El Dorado and Augusta where they lived, where um, his mother, um, Stanley Ann Dunham, was born. Um, discovered that Stanley Ann Dunham was not named for her father, who was Stanley Dunham, but was named for a character played in a movie by Betty Davis named Stanley. Sort of his 
arrival onto the mainland uh, after he graduated from Puno High School in Honolulu. His first college was Occidental College, which is on the Pasadena side of Los Angeles. Um, and it, it was uh, two years where for the first time he sort of was interacting with other African Americans to a significant, to some degree. Um, uh, had a very intellectual set of friends who were two and three years ahead of him in school who influenced him greatly. Um, a professor, at least one professor who was a major influence on him. And it really you can start to see his evolution beginning there in terms of what he became. Um, the first signs of of him having a sense of wanting to do something with his life greater than than he had before, and almost a, a feeling of destiny, which he talked to some of his friends about. Uh, I went to Chicago quite a bit because the, the arc of Barack Obama's life is a search for home. And, you know, because he didn't have a father, because his mother was off and gone, um, because he was uh, a hapa, as they call it in, in Hawaii, half one race and half another, he had a search for identity and home uh, all of his young life, and he finally found it in Chicago. Um, and so the arc of his progression leads inevitably there, and, and so Chicago is essential to understanding him. He started there as a community organizer um, and learned about power and how it works and how you get it and who wields it and why and how you can change people's lives. Um, on the south side of Chicago, dealing for the first time in his life, uh, living and working in a predominantly black uh, community, feeling for the first time that he was uh, comfortable there um, and at home and um, setting up the rest of his life. I almost invariably, my wife Linda comes with me and she's crucial to, to almost everything. Not only does she um, take a lot of photographs uh, for us and, and video, um, but she has a knack for, for making friends wherever in the world we go and really not just uh, almost adopting people so that they become our friends for the rest of our lives. And, and I can't tell you how important that is to not just break the ice with people, but, but get them to trust me uh, enough to give me the, you know, the most intimate details of their own lives and largely because they trust Linda so much. Um, so, you know, she's a great companion. Um, I don't like to travel alone. To have, you know, your best buddy with you is, is terrific in and of itself, but she has that extra added feature of being so wonderful with other people that it makes my job a lot easier.